smartphones. We can't uh, live without them. We're attached to them all the time. But they're such an enabling technology for our um, working and social lives. But have you ever sat back and thought about how much energy am I using? So what I want to try and convince you is that that it's not a small amount of energy, that it is quite a significant amount of energy. And hopefully, at the end of this talk, you will maybe change your ways, maybe think about some of the aspects that the smartphone is doing for us. It's, it's an enabling technology. It's taking other things away. Uh, I can't see these slides. Am I on the right? Sorry, there we go. So. When you plug in your phone into the electrical socket and you charge it every day, you would say, you would argue that that's not much energy you're consuming. And you'd be right. It's about 0.01 kilowatt of a, of a unit, 0.01 unit of electricity that you're using. So you can charge your phone 100 times and you're only spending 15 pence. But what I want to try and convince you today is that that is just the tip of the iceberg. So. What do we use our smartphones for? We connect to networks. So the phone is the tip of the iceberg. It's everything upstream of those networks, upstream of the phone, that I want to convince you that is, that is using all this um, energy. So you know about the technologies of 4G, 3G, mobile data. You know about Wi-Fi, when you walk into a, um, if you look at most people when they walk into a building, the first thing they're doing is taking out their phone, trying to see, find a Wi-Fi connection so that you can continue your internet access. So in order to do this calculation, I need to, um, to look at all the different aspects of um, the way we use our smartphone. And one of the ways we use it these days is voice-to-voice -voice communication. So I'm using some up-to-date statistics. Statistics sometimes can be um, um, a little bit awkward. Sometimes you, you have to use the latest statistics for this. So what we're looking at here is voice-to-voice -voice communication and it's an astounding 1,620 minutes that each of us uh, speak on our phone a year. Probably not much, but that still uses energy on our networks. So uh, looking at a carbon trust analysis report, uh, you can see that uh, 1,620 minutes converts to um, 11.34 kilowatt hours. So it's 11, kilowatt, 11 units of electricity. But the important thing to note is that we use our smartphones to connect to the digital services. And this creates a huge amount of traffic. You've probably read some statistics along the way, but in the UK, looking at uh, a Cisco and Mobidia report, we discovered in 2013 that this is an astounding 3.5 exabytes of, um, of data transfer. So, 3.5 exabytes, you may be wondering, what the devil is an exabyte? It's, it's a very large number. But you buy mobile phone, we buy our smartphones, and it's in the gigabyte range. Our storage is in the gigabyte range. An exabyte is a thousand, a thousand million gigabytes. It's 253 million DVDs. And actually, if you stack up 253 million DVDs, it's a thousand kilometers high. So, but obviously, in order to get what one single smartphone uses, I need to find out how many smartphones are in circulation in the UK. And a, a market uh, a report, mobile market report, said that the penetration in the UK is 72%. So that equates to 46 million smartphones in circulation as of last year. So let me just ask the audience here, just to see whether 72% is a right figure. How many of you are willing to own up to the fact that you don't have a smartphone? Well, I would say that's probably a penetration of more like 90 odd percent, but then, uh, so you can see the point, is that we're all 
uh, we're all using these devices. So 46 million smartphones, 3.5 exabytes of data transfer. What does this, um, what does this uh, equate to in energy? I go back to a TED talk by Jay Walker a couple of years ago. And at the end of the talk, he, he brought out some coal and he hold, held up a piece of coal and he says, the energy in that coal is what you need to transfer one megabyte of data across the internet. So if you look at uh, uh, more recent reports on how much that equates to and how many units of electricity for one megabyte, you get an, a figure of 0 0.01 kilowatt hours for one megabyte of transfer. So you can see that this 76 gigabytes per smartphone in the UK, an average value in the UK, equates to 760 kilowatt hours, 760 um, units of electricity. But that's only transfer across the network. You have to interact with these digital factories that are all over the globe. And there's an explosion of them. Build, we're building them like there's no tomorrow. If you're sitting here tweeting now, you're interacting with a digital factory, which we call a data center. So these are large scale computer systems that house all the digital services that we, we are using on a daily basis. Now, it's known that about 30% of the, uh, the, the traffic to these data centers is coming from the smartphone. But how do I equate, how can I get that, how can I get an amount of energy out from that? It's quite a difficult calculation to do. So what I did is I took a, a, um, I took a Time magazine report that was talking about the Google data centers and how much energy is consumed by uh, streaming one minute of video from YouTube sits in a Google data center. So it turns out that uh, for 100 minutes of video stream from a Google data center for YouTube is one kilowatt hour, one unit of electricity. So if we now look at the 76 gigabytes, if we, if we talk about, uh, if we assume that, that's, that all that energy is being generated by the 76 gigabytes that your smartphone is transmitting to the data center, then 100 minutes of stream is usually around about 400 megabytes on average. And you can see that, the, that we can convert the 76 gigabytes into 19,000 minutes of video stream. So when all that traffic that we're generating with our, with our smartphones is hitting these data centers and it's, equ it's equating to the equivalent of 19,000 minutes of YouTube stream. So you can then do the calculation and say, well, that's 190, approximately 190 kilowatt hours of um, that the data center has consumed in energy. So I've got the battery, how much energy is consumed by the battery. I've got how much energy is consumed by the voice, how much is consumed by our networks, and how much is consumed by these digital factories, these data centers, which house all these digital services. And you get a whopping great figure there of 959 kilowatt hours per year. You probably don't have, a f unless you pay the electricity bill, your own electricity bill, you probably don't know what uh, a 1,000 units of electricity equates to. So what I did is I thought, well, let's, let's see how this compares with a, a household in this postcode right now. So you can go to the British Gas website, and you can uh, ask for this postcode, and it will give you a range of what elec the electricity consumption per year by uh, a household in this district. And if you take a family of four with uh, the kids in secondary school, probably have smartphones, four smartphones, you're getting very close to 4,000 units of electricity, four smartphones. If you look at the range there for a household, it's almost as much as your house is consuming in terms of electricity. So this is a lot of electricity. But we mustn't get scaremongering. We mustn't say, oh, oh dear, I must not use my smartphone, because the smartphone actually is displacing other in energy intensive activities. An example, a classic example, is internet shopping. 
So if you look at uh, uh, supermarket shopping, it's more energy efficient for a diesel van to go around and distribute um, goods than all of us getting in our car and going to the supermarket. So there's a, there's a greening by ICT. So just because we're using more, all this energy on our smartphones, I know a lot of it is social media and obviously streaming video, but there are e enabling aspects to that. So you put petrol in your car, you put fuel in your car, and that the engine converts that energy in the fuel to motion. Where does all this energy go? What, is, what happens to all this energy? Well, the unfortunate thing for this industry, for th the digital infrastructure, is that 95% or more of it is heat. And that's unfortunate because it's a byproduct of producing those services, but it is also a, a tricky problem to deal with because you have to manage this heat. We have to maybe try and find ways of reusing that heat. So this is one of the areas that is of interest to me for, for a res research perspective, how we manage and maybe use the heat from this. So um, servers in and networks, all of these devices that enable us to access these services on the internet are producing a lot of hot air. You know your laptop or your desktop, you can hear the fans in it, it's moving air to cool all the microelectronics. What would be a better way of cooling the microelectronics? Liquids. But you would say, don't mix electronics and liquids. If I put my mobile phone in a basin of water, it's gonna, be, it's gonna malfunction. But I want to try show, uh, do a little demonstration now to show you that you can mix microelectronics and liquids. And what I have here um, is a specially engineered liquid in here, and I'm going to pour it in this jar. Put plenty in there so we can submerge a microelectronics device. So what's a good microelectronics device to put in there? Why not say a smartphone, yeah. Let's put a, let's put a, a, a microelectronics device in there. So I need, a sm I need a phone that I can dunk in here. Any volunteers? Well, you're closer, so <laughs> you sure? Okay, no. Okay, a working mobile phone. So um, this has got air gaps in it, so it's passively cooled by air. When I put it in there, it's gonna obviously displace all that air and there's gonna be lots of bubbles, okay? Might be some sparks, it might be sensational. So anyway, let's see what happens. So you sure you want me to put his phone in there? Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> yes, okay, right, okay, let's put it in then, yeah. You sure? Oops, screen's gone blank. Uh, could mean it's uh, got a screensaver or it might have malfunctioned. You see the bubble's still coming out there, so how can we test to see whether it's still alive? Call it, okay, does anybody know his, do, do you know his number? Is it gonna work? You can actually dunk the microphone in if you want. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so, so there you go. You can see that you can uh, mix microelectronics and liquids. So this is a specially engineered liquid, and it has special properties. So how have we used this? So what we've done is this is an award-winning um, prototype system, which was developed by uh, uh, a startup company in Sheffield. And, and we took stock of uh, the first system here, and we've been looking at ways uh, which, um, and how this actually works from a transfer in the heat problem. So inside the, the black cabinet there, and the internet, all of the digital services that I talked about, all of the digital factories have 
millions of those black racks, those black cabinets. And inside there are, are, my, are the uh, servers that give you the digital services. And you can see them, they're, they're in a vertical position. So usually when you have, if you look inside a laptop or a computer, there's a gap, microelectronics, and then there's a case around it. What we're doing is the air gap, we're just filling, we're sealing it, and we're filling it up with this liquid. And the cool thing about this is, is that the, as the liquid gets hot, it expands. And as it expands, it will rise. And so, and at the, on the other side, on the opposite side to where the electronics are, we have a, an aluminium block where we're passing water through it to harvest, to collect the heat. And so what we've got is a natural convection. We've got a, we're actually transferring the heat from the microelectronics to the water, to the water, using the heat itself. So rather than using fans, we're using heat to, 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 move, the, to move the heat which is a great way of, 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 of doing things. And what you can see to the right of that picture there is a couple of domestic hot water radiators. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to capture the heat from the microelectronics into the water, and then from the water, a, second, a secondary loop into the hot water radiators. And it's heating up uh, the lab very nicely. So. As, this tech, as, the, as the internet and as all of, the art, all of our demands for our digital services grow, these racks will still increase. And if we can start to be more intelligent about the way we do things and, and use factors like using liquid and maybe reusing the heat, maybe converting the heat back into electricity, then it would make uh, using our smartphones more sustainable. Thank you.